Hey guys and girls, my name's Dan. Welcome back to The Forge. In this episode of Trust Me, I'm a Blacksmith, I'm going to show you how to make your very first knife and potentially quite a nice Christmas present. So, um, I spent a little bit of time today, uh, all of an hour, I think it took me about an hour to make this, um, making this little uh, knife. It's based off what we were told is a Saxon design of knife. Uh, whether, that's, whether or not that's true, I don't know, um, but uh, I couldn't find any evidence basically. Um, but yeah, sort of like a medieval style, Saxon style, sort of like everyday carry around in your pocket knife, don't put it in your pocket, it's sharp. Um, but this is a letter opener basically, uh, it's made of mild steel and its function in life is to, is to uh, get deep into the guts of all those letters that you may have coming through the door at this time of year and this could potentially be a really nice Christmas present for your uncle or your dad or your granddad or someone like that um, because it's quite easy to make, uh, it doesn't need very much material and um, yeah, just like, especially like if your uncle's into fishing or hunting or something like that, this could be, or your granddad or whoever, it, this could be quite a nice knife. I'm not saying that girls don't want one of these as well, but um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, watch the video, I'll show you how to make this, and I'll see you on the other side. Okay, in each episode, I'm going to go over the materials and the tools you're going to need. Hopefully, this helps a little bit. So the first thing you're going to want to do is get yourself some flat bar. I'm going to put the American below. Um, you need to get yourself a piece of 30 by 6 mil flat bar. This is mild steel. If you want to make this a sharp, real kind of knife, uh, you're going to have to get yourself um, some uh, slightly harder stuff, some O1 or some W1 tool steel. I also have a set of um, bladesmith tongs. There is a video for this. I'll leave a link at the end of the video and in the description. These hold this stock perfectly. Right, uh, so uh, these are grand and I'd suggest you definitely go and watch the video of me making these. You're also going to need yourself a wire brush, a block brush and also a hammer of your choosing. You're going to need to get yourself an anvil, that's an obvious, and also a heat source, be that gas or coal or whatever. The first thing that we're going to do is uh, we're going to take a centre punch and mark from this one end, uh, 80 millimetres. This is just over three inches. This is going to be the bit that we're going to draw out for our handle. Um, it's going to go quite thin. It's going to go down to about 10 mil on this end and then drawn out into a nice taper and then wrapped around. So I'm going to get on with that now and I'll see you in a second. Okay, first job is to find that centre dot mark. Now, if you get it nicely on the edge, the centre dot mark, you can kind of feel it. So basically what I'm going to do, just get that Get that centre dot on there. All I'm going to do now is just give that a good crack with a hammer. Now I'm keeping quite a lot of pressure down. This is a bit cold now. And I'm aiming to hit half on and half off the anvil. That means the hammer's half on, half off the anvil like that. And I'm just going to get a little bit of a set down style. I'm going to get hot again. So we've got our set down set in. Give that a couple more backs. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just tip her forwards and bring this front down and work back to where the set down started. Just going to keep doing that, working back. And now I'm going to turn it through the side, just bring it back to a profile that matches the existing stock. And just going to do that again. forwards now this is bent up on me a little bit I'm just going to turn it over bring that down okay. and then I'm just going to take the corners off like so right same again I'm going to start this end I'm going to work down get to that set down and then work back forwards Turn it over onto the side. And carry on doing this. Okay, I'm gonna keep doing this until this is about a third 
uh, about two thirds deep. Uh, so I've got about two thirds of material that I will have drawn out as a stock, uh, and then I'll have about two thirds, sorry, I'll have a third of the material drawn out as stock, and then I'll have about two thirds just hanging down there. I'm concentrating on keeping this, when I'm forging this set down, keeping this nice and tight into the anvil. Okay, now I've got it to this point, I can start bringing it over. To the bit, I'm doing a bit more. Slightly more aggressive material moving. Okay, I'm just gonna spend a bit of time drawing this out. when I'm done. Okay, so what we've got here now is the tang basically drawn out. This is 210 millimeters long. It's about 10 mil here and it tapers down to a point. Um, this could potentially be a draw knife. It, all you'd have to do is just do the same thing on this end and you'd make it out of obviously a slightly uh, more robust material and you've got yourself a draw knife. But that's not what we're here to make. We're here to make this little uh, medieval-esque Saxon style knife. So the next job is I'm gonna chop a piece of this off and I'm gonna forge it into the blade. <coughs> Okay, I'm going for quite a stylized knife here. This is 50 mil. Um, if you want to make it a bit longer and make it a bit more of a um, bit more knife looking, then you can do that. Um, these aren't fixed measurements by any measure. Uh, once you've made one of these, if you copy this exactly, you can literally change all the measurements and it gives you a different looking knife. I'm going to just chop this off with a uh, slitting disc, I think, and um, then we can get on with forging the rest. So I've cut 50 mil off here and I neglected to mention that um, I can't actually hold this with the tongs that I said earlier. I'm having to use a set of these wolf jaws. Now, um, what I will be doing is holding the blade sort of like this, um, but probably closer to this end. It's still a bit hot, uh, so I can work on it. Uh, and then um, basically I might have to tidy up the other end. That's when those other tongs are gonna come in handy. Um, but uh, yeah, I forgot to mention that. If you don't have a pair of tongs like this, uh, there is a video of me making these so you can see them, uh, but alternatively, you can use a pair of pliers or something. Um, they're, I d I d they're not the best method, but if it's all you've got, then uh, they work just as well. Okay, so I'm gonna take the blade and I'm gonna start forging this corner. And then turn it over and basically, And just keep going like that until uh, until we have something that looks like a knife blade. Okay, you want to get this as hot as you dare. And depending on the material, obviously, I mean, higher carbon steels don't like to get anywhere near as hot. as your mild steels and your raw irons. So basically, keep it nice and hot, and that'll prevent the end from fish lipping, fingers crossed.
Okay. I'm just finishing this up now, straightening everything. I'm getting over the anvil so that I'm hammering back into the material as much as possible. And I'm just trying to keep everything nice and sectioned. This was 6mm when it started. This wants to be at least 6mm now, if possible. Okay, so now I've got something that looks a bit like that. So this is going to become our handle when it's wrapped round and this is going to be our knife blade. So now what we need to do is we need to turn this into a slight, uh, into a bevel so that we can establish a blade. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find an edge. I'm going to hold the blade at the angle that I want uh, the bevel to be. Sorry about the noise. forge myself a bevel. Find myself an edge. And draw out a bevel. Now, in order to straighten this up, I'm going to work off that side of the bevel. interested in now is just making everything as straight as possible. Um, you can also, if, you, um, if you're keen, you can use the hardy hole uh, to distinguish that bevel. Wheel. There you are kids. Catch with your face. Right. I'm going to grab her in the leg vice. Hold her nice and firm. Oh, she's got a hell of a twist in her. Uh, rasp. I'm then going to grab the rasp. I'm going to take the coarse side to start with. And then I'm going to give that a good rasping. The slightly less coarse side. Okay, so I've just hot rasped that. I'm going to do it again, uh, but as you can see, it works quite well at straightening up. Okay, so I've got an angle grinder here. That's how I'm just going to use the angle grinder just to dress a few little bits and bobs up, uh, like doing the edge. Um, I'm not going to go hard with the angle grinder, I'm using these flap discs. I'm also selecting flap discs that are slightly worn as well, this is a 60 grit, and then I've got 120. All I'm, all I'm trying to do is just tidy this up, I've quenched this off as well. Um, but yeah, it's just a, just, you can do this with a file, you can do it by ha um, with, a, with a grinder, a linen shirt, depends whatever you've got in your workshop. Right, I'm not sure how good the light is out here um, uh, and the sound quality, it's probably noisy, uh, a bit wind noise, but I want to show you something because it's something that's going to happen next year. Uh, project wise, it's a bit of a, a bit of a scrapyard out here and around the back of the workshop. Uh, but this here is a mortise tenoner. It's a tool used to put tenons on the end of big bits of oak. Uh, don't ask me how it works, I don't know. But this has become a piece of scrap metal.
and it's up for grabs for free. Now, um, I'm trying to get a good image of this. Okay, there it is. Now, I want to make a power hammer. I want a mechanical power hammer. And I want this bit here, this C-shaped section. Oh, let's see if I can get further away now. Right, there it is there, this C section here. So, um, it's the bit that runs along there, that bit there. Now, if I come down here, you see it's bolted in here, and these are slides on here. Um, so there's two slides on the back here, and there's some here as well. And also at the top, if you look just there, these are slides. Now. I haven't got a plan in mind just yet, but I reckon that, that would make a fabulous body for a power hammer. So here's the blade after the first grind, and I just wanted to show that all I genu genuinely, okay, there's a little tiny bit of grind in there because there was some little notch or something. I think it's from where the center dot was. Um, but you can see that all I've ground is the blade face uh, the bevels here for the for the edge for the blade okay and then this side as well haven't touched the tang haven't touched the back of the tang this end and I've just flattened off I've just flattened off this end here with the grinder that's all I've touched I've not touched anything else I've established a little bit of a point but that's it no more grinding on that at all Minimal, minimal, minimal. Right, okay, I'm gonna put this end in the fire now. Um, I'm gonna put a twist in this bit here. And then I'm gonna wrap the bar around with a little bit of a scroll on the end here. And then we finish. finish so the beeswax has been stained black uh, and it goes on quite nice it helps prevent with the rust and all I've done is I've just taken this edge off with the angle grinder so I hope you enjoyed that video these are lovely little knives and um, they work um, as uh, letter openers really well I should try, probably try and find a letter out oh, I've just got this bit of paper I folded it over and just like that so they work quite well as little letter openers um, and um, they're, they're quite nice little things. You can make these out of, um, you know, a more high carbon steel and actually make a knife. Um, I believe the point of this bit here, I've not left it very open, is to go over a belt or something. Uh, whether or not that's true or not, I don't know. Uh, I don't know very much about these, uh, but this one turned out lovely. Um, so if this is your first knife, give it a go. Um, it gets rid of a lot of the hassle of making a handle. Um, it's also, um, you know, it puts a bit of weight back into the back of the handle. You know, so it's quite nice to use. Um, I probably should try and make some of these with some real steel, actually, one time. Uh, knife steel. Um, but um, we'll see what happens. 
If you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you are a subscriber, remember to ring that bell for notifications because that will tell you as soon as I make a video. And I make them as often as humanly possible. I've tried really hard this week to get lots and lots of videos out. Um, uh, where was I? Yes, leave comments and um, all that stuff down below. Um, what I'm going to try and do is next week I'm going to try and give you another Christmas present idea. Uh, I've got an idea for a picture frame. If um, if I get a hundred, if I get a hundred comments saying they want to see the picture frame, I'll make that picture frame. Uh, I know that's a big task, uh, but we'll see if we get it. And um, also, uh, I will chuck a video up here to me making the uh, bladesmith tongs, and I will also chuck a video down here to me making the wolf jaw tongs. Uh, I think that's everything. That's my Patreon button. Click on that and go and check that out and also subscribe guys. Nice seeing you. See you later. Bye bye.